Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome back to another Now That's Debatable with myself and my brother there, Mr. Dion Curry. We are without Warren B. Hall this week because Warren is on his Brad Garrett Comedy Club premiere week um, and still celebrating his birthday. So uh, we'll talk more about that probably next week when Warren's back because I want to make sure that he's here to express all of his own emotions. It was his day, his night. I can't stand when people try to take the spotlight from somebody else's day and night. So I want to make sure he's here uh, so I can express what I want to express. Dion can express what he wants to express. And obviously Warren B can express everything that he wants to express. With all that said, thank you guys so much. Uh, I know you guys have gotten used to my high impact, high energy intros. But not today. Um, not for this particular show. Uh, I don't think it would be well placed. Uh, we got a great show lined up. Happy to have you guys coming in. We see you guys dribbling in here a little bit uh, by little bit by little bit. Shout out to Larry Skiggin, who's been letting every woman that he knows know about what we're going to be talking about. Dion has been doing a great job of accepting those requests to join the group. As a reminder to folks out there who want friends to see today's show or any other show after that, they must be a part of the group. So. You want to send out those invites, but we got a good one lined up. We're going to get into some um, very, you know what? I just want to say we're going to get into the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to let you guys have it from there. What's up, Kathleen K is with us. Uh, I'm going to throw it to Dion real quick. Dion's going to kind of let you know what he's up to and how he's doing. And while he's doing that, I'm going to put the link up above us to allow you men or women who want to jump in and talk Roe versus Wade with us. The reason I thought and we thought it was important that we were able to do that is because we've already had a bunch of men make a decision on women, whether it be over the many, many years, the 50 years that they had a chance to actually correct it and put it uh, and, and pass a law within Congress, and it was never done. We've also had it where there's a majority of men who sit on the Supreme Court right now, and, and they were the majority of the majority to make the decision to overturn versus uh, overturn Roe versus Wade. And Dion and I are two men. While we try to be as open-minded and open-hearted to the causes and the things uh, that deal with women, uh, positive and negative, we're still men. So we were hoping that some of you ladies, some of our female master debaters and males, if you guys have something that you want to share, would jump in and jump on with us too. So Dion's going to take it from here for a couple of minutes. Uh, Dion, brother, how you doing, man? What's good with you? How's it going? Um, I'm great. Uh, happy Sunday to all of our watchers and listeners. Um, welcome back, guys. I've missed you. It's been a while since we've done the show. We've been a little bit busy with uh, our schedules. Uh, shout out to Warren. Just had his 50th birthday. Shout out to Jessica, Katie Horgan, who all had birthdays this week. I hope you guys had fantastic fantastic birthdays uh i'm a little upset that i wasn't able to uh, join warren in vegas because i know that was a party and i'm looking forward to hearing all about that um, i'm doing good i'm down here in atlanta for about another two and a half weeks uh, we got a few more uh, episodes to shoot and then i will be heading back home in the middle of july sometime uh, i don't know the exact date because uh you know shooting schedule could change so um with that being said you know it's uh it, <laughs> this weekend has just been you know uh, a hodgepodge of emotions for me and a lot of uh female friends that i have i'm sure that you have sid who you know ha have come to face this this overturning of roe versus wade i don't want to get too far into it before we actually jump into the decision but I'm just going to say as a man, I personally feel like this is none of my business, what a woman chooses to do or not do with her body and what's growing inside of it. I, I, I've always held the position that the only man who actually has an opinion is the man who got that woman pregnant 
and everybody else's opinion is irrelevant. Now, I know some people are religious and they believe one thing according to their religious doctrine. Other people are not religious and they don't bring that up at all in the conversation. But me personally, I've always been of the belief that I can't tell you what you can and can't do point blank period. So uh, I just this I'm really looking forward to hearing the opinions of the ladies that we're going to have on the show, the, the men as well. If you guys don't want to join us on the link that Sydney's uh, posting, you can always leave your comments and we will make sure to read those, um, you know, because this is a very, very uh, heavy and important topic. And, you know, uh, I just I. I I'm trying to understand both sides of it, if that makes sense. I don't want to be the fence guy. I I personally am have always been pro-choice. I you know what what you decide to do with your body is your choice. And here in America, I always thought that that would be an understood thing, but as we're finding out, it's not. So you know, here we are. Well, let's you and I kind of get the ball rolling a little bit here. And as Dion said, you guys roll in with your comments. If you have anything that you want to share, um, please, as he said, as you always do, if you watch the show before, you know how it works. Throw those comments up there and hit, the, hit us with those emojis if you agree or disagree. Also, I just put up the link uh, above our beautiful faces there. If you want to actually get on and, and talk with us directly, um, we just want to have a discussion. And we want to include everyone who wants to be included. And again, uh, I'm like Dion, where uh, I'm a man. And I do not think I can tell a woman what to do with her body. And my part of this conversation has always been, it's not about, for me, not about abortion. It's not, take that out of it. And you have to take that up. And Dion, you're right. You have people who have all types of uh, reasonings why they want to put their nose in the middle of it. And most of it is dealing with religion, is dealing with God. But if you take it to the most basic principle, none of us want anyone telling, in, telling us what to do with our bodies. And that's where I think it really, uh, where the line needs to be drawn is, do we or does the government have the right to tell anyone what to do with their bodies? Now, there's all of the other things we're going to get into uh, after that. But you have to take you have to take everything else out of it and boil it down to that principle. And I think when we do that and if you were able to that, most of these people out here would say, OK, I, I don't agree with this. And we've seen that 75, 80 percent of the country do not agree with this. And that is probably the most maddening thing that's coming out from those nine people that sit on that court. You know, it's the the issue has specifically the abortion issue. I personally has always had a, a race connotation to it where the the effect of abortions, 60 percent um, of all abortions are white babies and so this whole theory of being outbred and out um becoming a minority in the future you've got all this history of how this country has treated minorities and then you know to come and find out that eventually just by sheer number you will become minority because you don't breed as often um i i don't want to get that part of it lost. I feel like, you know, a lot of the conversation that we're going to have about this decision um, will not include the, 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 the white fear of being the minority and what that's like in this country. You know, and I don't want to make this a whole race topic because most people genuinely don't care what race you are like that in and of itself, just seeing you as black or white or Asian or whatever, Hispanic, whatever. Most most people genuinely don't care. But then we have to take into account like policy and the reasons why decisions are made the way they're made. I think that plays a huge role in, into it. And I think, you know, we've got these quote unquote conservative judges who are, 
you know, who their base are people who dabble in this type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? R racism, I guess, you know, and I think that becomes a, a factor in this decision. I've heard that, I've heard, you know, and, and, and we're going to go all over the place here, folks, and you guys, as you usually do, will help us go all over, over the place. I want to make sure we cover this as thoroughly as possible um, within the time frame that we have this morning or this afternoon. But to that argument that has been made, Dion, by some people that, that they are afraid, some groups within the Caucasian group are afraid that they're going to be a minority, when you look at at the numbers, and it's been talked about exhaustively for the last week, or hell, even before that, actually, when that first leak came out, you are really forcing minority women to give birth more often to babies that they probably would have had, went and had an abort abortion for than you are any other group, black and brown women. So if this was your way to make sure that you did not become a minority, you've, you're going the exact opposite way. When you force poor people, brown and black, to have children that they otherwise would not have had had they had the choice. Because a lot of women, as I was listening again, I was watching the news trying to refresh my brain on some things that may have changed since two days ago. Um, you know, when you're looking at some women down in the south having to travel a thousand miles. And something I never really thought about was when it comes to having an abortion, there's pre-testing that has to be done. There's testing that has to be post-testing that has to be done. So when you're forcing a person to travel a thousand miles, that's not just one time they have to make that trip. That's several times they have to make that trip. And that's even more money, uh, even more expensive when you look at it that way as well. You know, adding on to the trauma of having to go a thousand miles multiple times to do a procedure that, you know, is a very tough decision for a lot of women. Um, whether it's a healthy pregnancy or not. Um, again, I just, I don't understand why as a government, as a group of people, we are that involved. If, if men could get pregnant, this would not be an issue. We would be able to do whatever the fuck we wanted to do with our pregnancies. And the fact that you have these six judges who are like, you know what? Nah, we don't care. We, we, we don't care what you want to do. We're, we're going to just blanketly make it illegal. And then we're going to hope that the states follow suit is it, is asinine to me. You know, the way we treat women in this country, um, I mean, it's, it's cattle like if you if you really look at it, it's cattle like they we treat women like property and, you know, it's this old, old school thinking. There's, it, it hasn't been updated. You know, we talk about the Constitution and, you know, how if it were an iPhone, it would be so overdue for an update. Yet, for whatever reason, you know, it's just status quo after status quo. So it, it's, it's so, fr it's just frustrating, man. Like, I'm 38. I've been in America for 38 years and I'm like, I, I want to see the greatness that everybody talks about, but all I can see is just the the hypocrisy and the one step forward, two steps back that we take. Like you, you talked about having to um, uh, force these minority people and the the opposite effect of it, and and that's kind of what really happens in this country is we say one thing and then you know. It's supposed to solve it and then it just makes it worse the war on drugs the war on poverty it's like those things were supposed to help and it just made it worse yeah i want to get into not so much obviously the war on poverty and war on drugs but i do want to get into some of the things that you're bringing up i want to go to some comments first because i want to make sure we're keeping everyone included uh remember folks throw your comments in we're going to try to get to everyone but the easiest way use that link that's above our head we would love to see you jump on uh, curlers, coffee in your hand, all that. Let's sit down and just chat because, you know, we're all family here. We've been doing this together for over two years now. So let's jump on in here if you if you feel comfortable enough. Kathleen K is with us as she always is. What's up, Kathleen? She says, hey, fam, 
Mary Ballard is one of our newest master debaters. She's been a loyal supporter since uh, she found us. So thank you, Mary. She's with us. She says, good morning, guys. Uh, Facebook user here. I apologize. I did not see your name. It says, woohoo, just pump, just jumped on. That's Katie. Katie, what's up? What's up, Katie? Um, and then someone says, good morning, right below Katie. Carla is with us. Says, hello, gentlemen. Mary Ballard says, I am pro-choice. She says, I personally don't think... I could ever have an abortion, but women should have a choice what to do with their bodies. And I think you're on board right there with the both of us. Um, let's well, let's take a minute right there, Mary. And I appreciate that you that you put it that way, uh, that you personally don't think. And we're going to all here assume that you've never had to make that choice. So but the fact that you understand it and you see it the way that Dion and I kind of see it because. We can't have an abortion even if we wanted to have an abortion. I mean, it's just not possible. But we agree. And I think, again, the majority, a large majority of the country agrees you have the choice. I will throw this in. When you, and, I, and, I, and, and, I, and I caught this this morning as well. When you look at the, the poll when it's done, we talk about that majority of the country says women should have the right to make that choice. But those secondary questions that come beneath it, okay, well, at what limit should they have the option? Should it be at 15 weeks? Should it be at this many weeks? Should it be at whatever? That's where you start to see those numbers start to change and switch a little bit. And I think that's the part uh, where the Republicans have it. I think the Democrats and the Republican both have an end here for the midterm elections. The overall number is going to be a great thing for the Democrats to pump. If they learn how to fight, that's what they'll do. But the Republicans can always come back and talk about those down uh, ballot poll questions, if you will, at what term. Because then that's where we start to see a bigger difference in what people agree on and disagree on when it comes to abortion, Dion. Well, like most doctors won't abort a fucking baby that's ready to come out of the womb so that's not even really to me a scenario that actually happens in life it's not like you're four days out from your due date and then you're like you know what let me get an abortion and then doctor's like all right boom got you snip snip cut cut and it's over like that doesn't happen at least not here in america so i you know that whole argument on what part of the term like let's be adults about common sense and, you know, there's a number that I feel the majority of women can agree on because, honestly, it's the women who should be making this decision. And as men, we should be supporting uh, the decision that makes most sense to them. I personally can't tell a woman whether it's it's 12 weeks, 15 weeks, 25 weeks, whatever is, is healthiest for them and safest for them. That is the number that I will back them to the day I die. But I, I, I just, that argument to me is, is kind of ridiculous. Like, you know, they make it sound like people are just going out like, oh yeah, I've carried this baby for nine months, but I don't want to do it anymore. And so I just get an abortion and, and it's all over. Like that, that is so let very me throw the, rare. Let me throw the other side of this coin at you though. And at the rest of you. And I, and, and I know we haven't made our way through the comments. We're going to get to them. And you know what? Thank you for our folks who are listening to us. Where I should have thrown it through that. I jumped straight into the show. I do apologize. Thank you for our podcast listeners as well. Um, if you could drop us a nice comment, whether it be on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, however you may be listening to iHeartRadio, if I didn't mention that one, iHeart Podcast, rather, we would love it. Thank you to our YouTubers uh, who are watching us as well. Thank you, guys. Um, let me throw this other side of the coin at you, though, Dion. Is there not a moral argument to be made on when, at how far along in a pregnancy that that child should be taken and thought of as a person? And no. No? No, because it's not your kid. Okay. It's not your kid. If it's not your body, you don't have a fucking say. Okay. Point blank period. You can't tell people what to do. I, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. It's, it's not your decision to make. I understand your moral dilemma. I understand that. But at the end of the day, you, you literally have no right 
to tell another person what they can and cannot do with their physical being. You have no say whatsoever. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Like I can't save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. No matter how much I love them, no matter how much I care about them. If they don't want to be here, if they want to if 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 they want to take their life, I I literally can't do anything yeah, other but than that's to the, try and convince them that that's a bad idea. But if they but decide that, to do that, that that's just something that I'm going to have to live with because I, I have literally no unless it's talking unless I'm like physically there to intervene and, and and stop them from hanging themselves or putting a gun to their head and I I like physically can be there and do something about it then at the end of the day if that's the choice that they're going to make I just have to live with it but that's but then that's the argument that is made from the other side that at a certain point of this pregnancy that child that baby cannot protect him or herself so now it is they don't is, have any rights to is, begin let, with let, let me let me finish so these folks feel like it does that the baby does have rights that it is a, a dependent upon society to protect the life of that human being inside of that person your argument is if someone wants to hang themselves you can't stop it you can't whatever that's one argument that's not the same argument for these people in terms of aborting that child because they see that child as a living human being so no they're, the unborn are exactly that they're unborn All so right. they by the law that we have they they don't get to vote they don't they don't factor into any of the decisions that we make point blank period other than to say that you can't have a, an abortion they don't factor in anywhere else they don't the, anywhere else in the conversation of life the unborn don't factor in except for abortion. They are, you don't take unborn into account when it comes to police brutality, uh, gerrymandering, uh, the lottery, smoking cigarette. They don't take the unborn into account to anything else. But all of a sudden, when someone decides what they want to do with their body, it's like, oh, society has a say now. Like, no, that's ridiculous. All right, let's get back to some more comments here. I want to put this up on the wall here. Uh, excuse me, folks. Here, I want to make this a little larger for people out there who are watching. Facebook user here, Dion, you can help me. Dion's going to help me out here because I cannot see everyone's names. Dion can most of them more often than not. Facebook user says, I don't understand how this happened. I am just dumbfounded, scared, and angry. That's and Katie Horgan. Katie, Katie, Katie. Katie, happy belated birthday. Thank you for being on with us. Um, Katie, I'll tell you how it happened. Democrats. Democrats ha is how it happened. You know, Mitch McConnell has been in the Senate for years. And it's an open secret that part of his mission has been to make that Supreme Court a conservative group so that things like this can get overturned. And since we're here, I was going to wait till we got a little bit later, but we can we can throw this in the mix now. You guys don't have to comment it, but we're, we're, I just want to throw it in. When I hear people like Manchin and Susan Collins coming out today and saying, I feel like I was lied to. I feel like I was misled all these different things, I, I say, I call bullshit. Because when you have, let's take old a Amy Comey Barrett, who is on the, on the court now. She's written so much literature over the years being pro-life. You were not surprised. You weren't fooled. Even though she would not directly answer a question. Even though Brett Kavanaugh wouldn't answer a question. You've had these guys in closed door meetings. So you knew what this what what this was is what this was. So I, I find all of it uh, to be disingenuous. But how it happened were the, de the Democrats. I've said this on this show. I've said this in private conversations. The one thing that irritates me, and for people out there who do not know, maybe you're just watching for the first time, I am a conservative independent, but but I was a lifelong Republican. The one thing that has always irritated me about Democrats, they don't know how to fight or they just won't fight. You've been watching Manchin and the Republicans pushing this agenda for years, even to the point where they wouldn't let today's um, attorney general, Merrick Garland, even get a hearing, let alone not be confirmed, because this has always been the mission. So this is how it happened. Uh, we should all be scared. We should all be angry, Katie. But this is how it happened, in my opinion. Deanna, any, anything you want to share on that? 
I mean, you can blame the Democrats because at the end of the day, they were the last line of defense. But, you know, uh, it, this just all boils down to people not getting out and voting and, and paying attention to the, the, the issues that should matter to, to people. Like, we've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get rid of people like Mitch McConnell, Joe Manchin, Susan Collins, um, Jim Cornyn, you know, just all these terrible politicians but dark money and you know we we we've kind of had that conversation multiple times about how the money system works to keep these people in charge you know we as the american people at some point have to decide what we are and are not going to tolerate like we've tolerated this trumpism for the past five six years where stupidity is the norm where we don't believe actual facts. We believe wild conspiracy theories where people can just make shit up and say it enough times. And then people are like, oh yeah, that's fake news now. That's, that's you're, you're the liberal media who, who's got an agenda, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, the, the, the person they're following is, is robbing them blind for every penny dollar and then not making their life any better. Like that, that is who we, who have been this country We've been this stupid for a very, very long time. Social media has made it even easier for stupid people to access one another and to form these super dumb groups. Absolutely, I agree with all that. And the other thing in terms of money, and you know what, let me go to uh, Facebook user. I, I don't know if this is Katie again or not. Let me know if this is Katie again, Dion. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this is an activist, radical right-wing Supreme Court that ruled based on religious ideology what happened to separation of church and state. Is that correct? Larry Skigan. Larry. Larry, we crossed that line a long time ago. A long time ago. I, <laughs> the antiquated ideas that the forefathers of this country had, obviously, they couldn't see hundreds of years beyond to know what that document that they sat down and put a lot of what they felt was a lot of thought into how that would take how that would change things and affect things today there was no way that they could know but church and state we crossed that line a long time ago and much like a lot of things in this country dealing with the government separation of things only counts when you want it separated i've bitched about this for years one of my biggest issues with our political system, especially during presidential election, if you talk, break down church and state to the most basic of it, and both of them play parts of this, is when I see a presidential candidate at a church speaking. This should not be done. You have no business there. The church has no business letting you be in there. That is crossing the line of that separation at the most basic of principles, at the most basic. And so if we allow that and never, ever, ever speak a word of negativity about that, then where are we going to be on so, so many of these other things? And so we crossed that line many, many years ago, and it only takes the first person to do it and for a lot of us to look the other way on it for it to be something to be allowed. And that's another reason why we are where we are on a lot of different things. Do you have anything on that one? I think it's funny, you know, that a lot of these quote unquote Christians bring up what the Bible says, but, you know, they, they fornicated, they've worn mixed linens, they, you know, didn't keep the Sabbath holy and so on and so forth. But like, no, this, this okay. one issue is the sin that makes you, uh, you know, want to bring God into the conversation. It, it, it's just another way to be hypocritical. God does not give a damn about what happens on earth. Let me say that one more time. God does not care what happens down here on earth. That's why he doesn't live here. God is an alien. He doesn't care. What? <laughs> he doesn't care. This took a this took a God real right. God is not an earthling. So what right happens turn. on earth doesn't matter to God. He doesn't care. <laughs> He'd have sent his son back if he actually ca cared. He don't care. It's been 2022 years, allegedly. <laughs> he ain't coming back. So y'all need to let that shit go. 
Just be a good human being. He gave you the lessons that you were supposed to learn through his life and death. You are supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. You're not supposed to hurt anybody. You're supposed to give to the poor, the sick, take care of the weak. Well, but y'all are more concerned about police and shit that don't need to be police. If somebody wants to get high in their house, let them get high in their house. Your God is not going to punish you for what somebody else does. Mind if, your if, fucking business. And <laughs> oh, they have this really, whole religious shit gets on my like. Th there should be a gigantic separation between religion and and government. Like, what you believe is what you believe, but you can't prove any of the shit you believe. All you can do is pray and have faith. That's it. That's all you can do. But, and, and taking that another step further, uh, that is something that is upsetting to a lot of people on that religious right. Not enough of them. But that they made this deal with the devil. And I, when I say the devil, I mean with Donald Trump. And they too, along with Mitch McConnell, made that deal with the devil so that they could get exactly to this point. Again, they are the minority. When you look at the top line of that poll, they are in the minority of people who believe that Roe versus Wade should have been overturned. But they're also powerful enough and have enough money to make these type of power plays. You know, I think you spoke about it uh, just a couple of minutes ago when we talk about dark money and things like that. I think the thing that we also don't ever think about because we thought it was supposed to be at least the purest branch of our government, is that money comes into play when we're talking about who's getting nominated to the Supreme Court as well. There's backdoor deals being made for you to get that nomination. It's not just that you've never been divorced. It's not just that you've never had a DUI. It's not that you went to Harvard or Yale and who you, who you clerked with. All of that obvious stuff on the surface stuff that they explain to us but there's a lot of other things that are happening. There's a lot like there should be no closed door meetings between a senator and a, a, a nominee. That should never happen. So there's a lot of discussions that are happening that we have no idea. That's why I don't buy this stuff that I hear from Manchin and Susan Collins and anyone else who wants to come out and say that they were hoodwinked and bamboozled. You knew what you were getting when this person was nominated. You knew it. If I'm well, out they, here, didn't they didn't they ask him during this uh, the confirmation hearings where, whether they would change the law? You, and and yeah, then but, they say no, we're not going to do anything. And then the second that it came up to the debate, they fucking they did don't exactly ever, what we knew they no were going to do. No one ever says yes or no. None of the nominees say yes or no. They find other ways to dance around it. That's why I say looking at Amy Comey Bear, using her as an example, though you could use all of them. She had so many papers that she had written before she was ever nominated where she, she was arguing pro-life. So I don't need to ask you. And Susan Collins can't tell me that you were tricked. You had all the evidence in front of you. I don't need you to give me a confession. You know, unlike the Chris Rock joke from back in the day, the police have all the evidence in the world, but they still want the confession. I don't need your confession. I have all of the evidence. So this alone lets me know what your thoughts are. How do I think that a person in his, fort, in his or her 40s or 50s are going to get up here on this bench and all of a sudden have a change of heart and a different state of mind? You can't. And that doesn't even make sense. So you knew what you were getting, Susan Collins and Joe Manchin, and you liked it. But now, and Susan Collins, for the last couple of big decisions, have, has done this, including with Trump, where, oh, he said X, Y, and Z, so I believed X, Y, and Z. I had no idea that this was going to happen. Then you're too stupid to even be breathing. Uh, it's, it's just pure nonsense all the way around. But the money, like you brought up, dark money, follow the money. Follow the money. Well, he, I'm Usher. Here are my confessions. I don't, I, I, I look at the evidence. I look, I look at the, the truth. Like you said, she's got all these papers. Mm -hmm. and, and when I ask you a direct question, if it's a yes or no question and you don't answer immediately yes or no, it is the opposite of what you are saying. Whenever you ask somebody a yes or no question and they don't immediately give you, nope, this is what it is, they are fucking lying to your face. 95% yeah. of the time, if you ask somebody a direct question and they pause and they don't hit you with yes or no, 
It's the opposite of what they're saying. They're about to spout off a bunch of bullshit to try and mislead you and get you distracted on what you really want to know because they don't feel comfortable telling the fucking truth. And those Senate uh, or those uh, Supreme Court hearings was a perfect example of that. Are you going to overturn Roe versus Wade? Well, it's been, it's law now, so there's no point in having this conversation. No, bitch, that's not what I asked you. It's a yes or no question, and you started running your mouth about something else, so I know you're fucking lying. That's, that's just how life works. I'm 38 years old. I'm a comedian. I'm very good at understanding groups of people. Sydney, you and I both know this. We know how to read a room, yeah. right? So when I sat down there and I watched, I'm not shocked by this at all. The fact that people are too lazy to call out people on their bullshit and hypocrisy is the reason we're in this mess in the first place. People are too busy trying to be comfortable instead of being accurate. Well, what Susan, and that's the problem we have. Well, well, what Susan Collins, and I'm going back to her specifically because she's the one that irritates me the most out of all of this. What she specifically, because she's a woman, what she wants is to ride that line. I'm a woman. I ride with women. I had no idea that this was coming. She lied to me. At the same time, wink, wink over here to the conservatives on this side who are probably slipping money to her back pocket as well. You see, I played the game well. We got who we wanted on the court. Now we got what you wanted or maybe what we wanted. I don't know what Susan Collins believes in her heart and mind. But at the end of the day, I got you what you wanted. And ladies, I ride and die with you all at the same time. You can't have it both ways. And it's, it's, it's too often we allow them to have it both ways. Danae Turner is with us. Danae, as always, let's see what Danae, I'm going to throw it up on the wall. Danae says, white colonialism kicking in thinking that they, quote, have the right answer and they are, quote, saving the uninformed. I would, I would definitely agree with a lot of that uh, there, Danae, absolutely. Um, Mary Ballard says, my biggest problem with this ruling is what is next. It's scary to me. And of all of, and Dion, I don't know if you saw this or not, of all of the justices, Clarence Thomas was to was the one who wrote in his his opinion that and it's weird because you would think that none of them would want this to be out even if this was your mission but Clarence put out I think he I think he was he saying out loud what a lot of conservatives and a lot of those justices were probably already thinking on the court yes now we've overturned this you know what we might even look at overturning legalized the, the gay marriage being legalized. We might overturn contraception. We might overturn this. We might overturn that. So, Mary, you make a great point, something that, that, again, has been spoken about a lot over the last couple of days. This may just be the tip of the iceberg of things that they're going to try to go back and change uh, on the court level. Have you talked to any of these people who believe this stuff? They have never hidden how they feel about homosexuality, abortion, uh, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, uh, interracial marriage. These people have not been hiding what they feel. Anytime there's a pride march, they're out there protesting that. Anytime uh, you see with the don't say gay bill down in Florida, like they're not hiding. They've never hid. We've always known what the Christian conservative fundamentalist idea is. You are a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant person and you believe what I believe. And if you don't, you're the enemy. Like that is not new. That's not new information. We've all known that they've found ways to try and hide it. But if you don't put up with bullshit like me, you are not shocked by this. And it isn't until these people actually have black people in their family, gay people in their family, uh, trans people in their family, that they even think to have a conversation about changing their ideas. So this we got to stop acting like this is something new. It, it's it's not new. They haven't tried to hide what they they haven't changed their beliefs since the 40s, 50s and 60s. It's none of this stuff is new. It's not. It's not a brand new concept for but everybody else. But you, and and <clears throat> excuse me, you're right in a lot of ways. And you made me think about something. And this again, I'm going back to the Democrats. The Democrats are the football player, college, high school, pro, whatever, who scores a touchdown and high steps and dances like the game is over. It's still the first quarter. 
The Republicans always and have always understood and have played the long game. And that's what they have done. Every time you say as a Democrat or an independent, let's say you're an independent who leans the Democrat way. I only vote for the presidential election. That's the only time I get up off my couch to go put, to put my ballot in. Even though they've made it so easy that I can do it right from my living room couch. But this is the only time I vote. You miss out on an opportunity to do a lot of things and good for yourself and your fellow man because you think the game is over and that you've already won. What people don't understand, and you're seeing it right now, is when things like this from the Supreme Court happens, they kick it back to your state. Now your president that you think all you have to vote for doesn't even come into play. You know who comes into play? All those uh, uh, elected officials on the state level that you paid no attention to, that you did no research on, that you skipped out on for that particular election cycle. Now, those are the people who come into play. And that's why I say the Democrats have done a piss poor job because they always think the game is over in the first quarter of the game. While the while the Republicans are playing all the way hell beyond the whistle for people who are football fans, they say play to the whistle. And that's what Republicans do. And that's what the, uh, the Democrats always fall short on. So now we have at least half of this country, half of the states in this country are going to institute laws that make it illegal for women to have abortions. And some of that could have probably been avoided, like you were saying earlier, if you had to use your power as the people to let your voices be heard. Now, you have to do it. And if you don't do it now, God will help you for whatever else might come out of that court next. Go ahead, Dion, I'm sorry. You know, it's it's one of those things where you're right. They don't put up a fight. But, but if you look if you look at it traditionally, a lot of it is just talk. I'm going to say what I need to say in order for you to get my vote. And then I'm not going to do anything, whether it's Republican, Democrat or independent. We we know that politics is all about the next election cycle and getting those enough votes so I can keep this job so I can keep cashing these checks. And until we as a people like, you know what, we have got to find a way to get this money out of the decision making process for what's the good of the people. You know, I hear the term conservative. I hear the term liberal. I'm liberal about letting people live the life they want to live. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you want to get high. I don't care if you want to have an abortion. It's none of my fucking business. I want to conserve the environment. I want to conserve peace within the, the city limits. That's what I'm conservative about. I'm conservative. I want, I want to live in a clean environment. I want it to be a peaceful environment. I want you to be able to live the life you want to live. You want, I want you to be able to marry who you want to marry. I want to be able to let you do with your body whatever you, it is you want to do with your body. Why is that something that's so difficult for us as a country to agree on? Like, if, if you asked the majority of people, they would all say, yeah, I want peace at home. I want the liberty to do whatever it is I want to do. And I don't want some government entity telling me I can and can't do it. It's not a hard concept to understand, yet we bicker about it. And, and because of religion or the way we were raised, who raised us and this trickle down thought process, it's just frustrating, man. I. I I, I don't see a way that this country can come back from this. I really don't. Well, uh, the, the way that we can make some type of uh, turnaround is going back to what I was saying. People actually getting out and doing what they should do. And that is using your power to vote and putting people who do have your people are going to lie. I agree with you. But that is why it is on you. And I've said this on this show before. For the last election cycle, I sat on my couch and I went through the ballot. And whether you were a Republican or Democrat, I did the research on that individual for my state elected uh, officials, as well as for the president. Obviously, obviously, president was a lot easier. I wasn't voting for the racists who made me turn away from my own party. But that is what I did. It is on you to educate yourself. It is not on you to to fall for the okie doke and elect the person that they just find the high points. And throw that up on a commercial and say, oh, I like that. 
or I like what he or she says, I'm going to vote for them. It is on you. Again, going back to the Omi, uh, uh, Amy Comey Barrett, I knew she would cast her decision this way based off what I knew she had done prior. Your past will always inform the present. Very seldom does it not. Very seldom. And you are fooling yourself if different. It's just, again, you, you have friends out there. You have relatives out there that you wish. Oh, my God, I wish they would do better. I wish they would change. I wish they would save money. I wish we could get along. These people are 40, 50 years old. You know that the change isn't coming. So why would you believe that change is coming within your politics and within your politicians? It's not. So you have to do your research. You just can't fall for the okie doke. It's on each and every person out there in this country to get up, educate themselves and vote. Every one of them. You have no reason not to vote. No reason. Because everything that you hold dear is at stake. And if you didn't believe it before, you better let the last two days inform your present. All right. Back to some comments. Thank you guys again for throwing up the comments. This has been a great conversation so far. We're going to let this thing keep rolling. I know that we said we wanted to cap this uh, at about an hour, but we want to make sure that we get to as many of you as possible. Thank you guys again for getting up with us. If you're here back in my time zone uh, and if you're back east, thank you guys for sitting down with us for a little bit. All right. A Facebook user says people didn't even want to wear masks because it was an infringement of their rights. Hypocrites. Absolutely. What's good that was for your them wife. Is, oh, that's my wife. OK, that's my wife, Tamara Smith, who posted that. Tamara, you are right. Um, Tamara also said yesterday when we were driving in the car, because she is so my wife is she doesn't get uh, pissed off about a lot of things. But like a lot of women, she's pissed off about this. She says we should pass a law. And I'm paraphrasing that says men cannot masturbate. <laughs> she said because men, you're killing babies every time. You masturbate. So that should be the next law that has passed. And uh, I personally almost crashed the car. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she what? <laughs> but she made a good I, I, point. I, I, can I can tell you one thing. The fines that will be paid in order for that law, <laughs> these roads will get fixed all across the country, let me tell you. Well, twice a third third time over. You are right. You know what I'm saying? We will have a brand new space program. <laughs> Every child will have an iPad. Yeah. Damn. Let me tell you. Damn. Why are they paving the roads for the third time <laughs> in six months? There's a lot of money in the bundle. Because DI can't stay off XNXX.com. That's why. Uh, oh, man. That, but that's a good, good point there, Tamara. All right. Let's see here. Next Facebook user here says justice thomas already said that the court needs to go back and look at gay rights it won't end there that is scary absolutely larry skiggin larry absolutely right there larry let's see got carla in with us what's up carla carla says the government doesn't have the right to decide what i do with my body uh i, I think the majority of here if not 100 percent, we all agree with that definitely facebook user here says hello y'all what's up what's alan good? lawson okay what's up alan's been a minute man it's been a minute throw you up there all right let's get to this one here you are right from the book when abortion was a crime, when abortion was made a crime around 1873, one of the main reasons was the fear of immigrants, which at the time were Irish, Germans, etc. White, but they were not Protestants. So I think that person is agreeing. I feel like they're agreeing Andrea, with both of us, maybe. A a Andrea Zurich. What's up, Andrea? Yep, you are right there. And that is a crazy thing also when, I, when you think a lot of people don't, some people do, but it's not brought up a lot. In terms of when we think about prejudice, we automatically go to racism and what we forget about in this country long before we were holding down black people, slavery, all that kind of stuff was a discussion. There was this inner turmoil between white people that because you're not where I'm from, I'm better than you and you're less than. And a lot of times, as was put there, it was done to the Italians. It was done to the Germans when they got here. So that prejudice spans well beyond difference in skin color, well beyond I have a penis and you have a vagina. It's even that infighting amongst themselves going all the way back to the 1800s. And thank you for bringing that up, uh, because I think that's something that gets lost a lot of times. 
Um, it's almost like, oh, we have black and brown people. We can all come together and now decide that we don't like them as much. And let's, but long before that, they had the infighting where they were holding each other back and, and, and things like that. Here's the issue I have with that, though. Black people have no interest in getting retribution for the, the past crimes of, you know, the forefathers. Like, I can't punch George Washington in the face. So there's no point in me hating some random white person for what George Washington did. Like, that's not how we operate in this country as a majority. Now, there are a few black people who would love to get reparations that ride out on a lot of white people. I know a few of them personally. Yeah. I think they're lunatics. Absolutely but crazy. The majority of the black people in this country just want to live our life the way y'all live y'all lives. That's it. Without being harassed, without having our skin color determine the way that we're treated. The way white people walk around in this country, where people don't know if you're German or Irish or Jewish or whatever. They don't know. They look at you and they see you as the baseline majority. Point right. blank, period. That's all black people want, is to be the baseline majority. Treat me the way you would treat anybody else. And when we have to get into the details, then we'll get into the details. But I'll say this, when and if that day ever comes, let's say it came- They won't. Let's say, let's say argument's sake, let's say the day came tomorrow, then there would be another group of people that would be put on the bottom as well. So that was kind we of- We already have that group of people. It's the trans people. It's always going to be somebody at the bottom. And that's the biggest fear of the people on the top is that eventually the carousel will flip and they have to come down from being up top and to ride down on the bottom. I would disagree with what you just said, but that's the argument for a different day. But I do appreciate the discussion that you kind of took us into. So thank you for the comment. All right, um, next Facebook user comments. If I can put it up, did I have it up? I don't understand how they can just decide, nope, and then make it illegal, especially in all circumstances, rape, um, ectopic, pregnancies, and et cetera. I, uh, that kind of goes back to what we spoke about before because Congress never got up off their hands and did anything about this. A lot of it was because for 50 years, this has been in place, and I don't think anyone ever saw or thought this was coming, but they never saw it was coming because they had their eyes closed. But that's how that, we got to that, where we are. That was Katie Horgan. And again, hey, I'm, I am never shocked by the depth of depravity that Christian conservatives will go to in order to get their way. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Facebook user says, but Dion, that's how the USA look at women all the time. Forgive me. I'm not quite sure when you put that comment up. So I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Dion, any idea what you said that this individual would be? I think when I was talking about how we treat women like cattle, ah, that yes. was that was Alan. So. Okay. Katie Horgan. Someone says to Katie Horgan, they're hypocrites. They believe some murders are okay. All right. Larry Skiggin. Larry. Mary Ballard says, I have never had to make the choice. Thank the Lord. I also have no children. Mary, you did not have to share that. So thank you for doing that um, as well. So Carla says, I dealt with it in the 90s. It was scary and sad, but it was my choice. So Carla is our first uh, female master debater who has shared her past with us. So Carla, thank you very much. Um, An applause break is not appropriate here, of course. Uh, so I would not do my usual, but I will thank you for um, being open enough to share that with us. I've, I've, I've had a lot of relatives and friends I've had this discussion with over the years. I know that it is a scary thing especially if it is your first time going in. I know sometimes for some women it's not. I knew a girl when I was um, in Hawaii, she'd had four abortions. And I remember a lot of people thought about her, ugh, ugh, four abortions and what the hell, can't you use condoms and all these different things? And with all that said, no one ever said she should not have the right to do it. That was never a statement. That was never anything that was ever thought by anyone that I had a discussion with at all. Because as you said, Carla and Dion, and I agree, it is your choice. Whether you agree with abortion or don't agree with abortion, to me, is not the argument. You can agree and disagree all day. But what you have to come to some type of agreement on is that these women have the right to decide what they want to do. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it. Whether you agree or disagree with, I got this tattoo on my arm, 
that's fine. But I have the right to do it. And to me, that's the that's the that's the only thing that matters in this argument. The only thing. Yeah. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Women should have the absolute right to choose one way or the other. You know, if yeah. it, 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 that's a decision that they make with themselves and their doctor and those are the and, and the husband or boyfriend or one night stand or whoever the father of the baby is those three people are the only ones that get a a, a vote in that conversation if the doctor doesn't want to do the procedure okay i understand that is there a way to make it so that they can absolve themselves of the situation without complication we can have that conversation as well but ultimately if the woman says i don't want to carry this pregnancy for whatever fucking reason she decides i have to be 100 percent okay with that I agree. as someone who's not in the room who didn't get her pregnant point blank period and even if i did get her pregnant and i didn't want her to keep uh to abort the baby at the end of the fucking day my opinion should not she should not have to uh make a decision based on how I feel and what my thought is because it's her fucking body. I agree with that. Facebook user here has asked the question. I clicked the link. Can you see that it's me commenting? Um, That's Katie Horgan. So no, Katie. Katie, I cannot. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I like this, um, this app for a lot of reasons, this software for a lot of reasons. There's a couple of things I dislike, so I apologize if that link is not, but no, I am not seeing it. Uh, Larry Skiggin, uh, so someone commented to Larry. 14th Amendment says people are citizens when they are born. That was your wife. So that is my wife. Um, so I told you guys, for people who watch this show, tell me how many times you've seen my wife comment anything on this show. I frankly, I'm not even sure if she even knows what I do for a living. So, so tell me how many times you see that. Just, I'm telling you guys, she is pent up about this. Pent up. All right. The people who were so mad that Bernie didn't get the nomination in 2016 so they didn't vote for Clinton and handed the election to Trump are responsible for this. Trump got to appoint three justices. Elections have consequences. Who said that, Dion? Larry Skiggin. Larry, you are so right. I've said this on the show. I've said this on stage. I've said this in private conversations. I couldn't stand that pants suit wearing woman. But I bit my tongue until I could taste blood because I was not voting for the woman hating, pussy grabbing, racist, flip flopping, broke, who pretends to be rich, Donald Trump. And a lot of people sat at home. And a lot of people who look like me sat at home. It's the one thing I tell people all the time. And for some reason, people don't seem to, be, to believe it. Black people will stay home if you do not give them a candidate that they believe in. Going back to the Republicans, the Republicans know this. They know that black people will stay home if you don't if they don't like either candidate. That is a flaw within my group of people when it comes to elections. And you are right. If you sat at home because you didn't like anyone and chose not to make a decision, you are partially the reason why we are where we are. You could have done something else. And so many of you stayed home. And I will never forget it because it was my birthday, November 8th. I was out having some drinks with a bunch of friends. And it was maybe 8, 9 o'clock. And I'm looking up at the screen because I'm a, a political junkie. And Hillary Clinton was already getting her ass whooped. So you're not the only reason, but you're a big part of this. You shouldn't have sat on your hands. You should have at least went out and made an attempt to do something, to do something. Do something different for these midterms. Do something different in 2024. Do something different going forward. I see you shaking your head, Dion. You and I always disagree on this. Yeah, because I live in Indiana, and if all the black people voted for Hillary Clinton, it wouldn't fucking matter. <laughs> it's a red state. That we're outnumbered. Not just Indiana. So, I'm talking about across the country. Uh, and, and, and I'm telling you, 13% ain't going to get you elected to the presidency. It's just not going to happen. This is a numbers game. A lot of black people have felonies, so they can't vote. 
You're not going to win. Would you stop it? Matter. Black people help push Biden into office. He's only in the office because of black people. Nah, that's not the only reason. You that is the only reason. People. He was on no, his way. No, it isn't. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Okay. We, no, this it is, isn't. Let's think. Well, conversation for I, another I love, day. I love, how, I love how we try to make it seem like it was the black people in Georgia and Arizona and, and Wisconsin and, and, and Pennsylvania who, like, no, there were... A lot of white people who were tired of Trump shit and were like, I'm not voting for this motherfucker again. Or I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton because I can't stand her, but I see how terrible Trump is. And I, I, y'all can put a fucking unicorn up there and I'm going to make sure I don't vote for Trump. When it comes so, to Hillary Clinton, I'm with you. If there was a lot of people who, who did not vote, who either voted for Trump. Women were a large percentage of that because they just don't like her because she's, she's just unlikable. So a lot of them too. So with you, with the Hillary Clinton, I'm completely with you. They they have a a lot of they got to carry a lot of this water too, because you put a man in the office to help turn your group back 50 years. So I'm with you there, but it for but for Biden, come on man, that dude was getting ready to head to the retirement home until uh, 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 they came out the woodwork for him down the south. He he should have because of you know look. I've always been pro Bernie. I will always be pro Bernie. And you know, you get what you ask for, even if you don't ask for it. So, hey, this is this is the the situation that we're in as a country because we cannot agree on should we help people who need help for whatever reason they need help with it. A lot of this boils down to is I don't want to spend my money to take care of somebody who should be able to take care of themselves. Well, okay, I understand that. But at the end of the day, a healthy, strong America is one where even the people on the bottom are doing well. Okay, and it's I'm like, not about to let you do this. I'm I know, I, I, I know. I see. I knew you were gonna try to cut me no. off because you, <laughs> you are a conservative you. at heart, and you are you have always <laughs> been of the belief that look, my money's my money, and I'm gonna do with it what I want. And if you try to come over here and take it, we gonna have a problem. And I'm of the belief that it does, money doesn't fucking matter. You can make it. It's 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 it's, it's yeah. easy to make. We print it up. We, we we stamp it with old dead white dudes pictures and it doesn't really fucking mean anything yeah yeah, yeah. but no i'm stopping you because we could be having a discussion about uh, what's better raising this or whoppers and somehow you would turn they both it suck. you would turn it to this you would turn the discussion to where you, and i'm like no 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 we're not doing this today <laughs> raising that and whoppers what is this Let's all go to the lobby. Like, what a, what a nineteen sixty drive-in bullshit candy you're talking about. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I love that you that I love that you shit on it, but you're the only person on this show who knew the fucking song. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I go to the movies a lot. Yeah, but I tell you what, I never eat when I'm at what, the movies. Fucking what, whoppers and raisins. What heads. movie theater are you going to where are still? <laughs> Does the does the fucking usher still have a uniform with a little hat on his head? <laughs> Take it no, head. the usher is a special needs person that we've hired oh. to have that job so that they can be proud of themselves. <laughs> Just, all right, we moving on. I'm not going down this road with you. All right, <laughs> you're so stupid, man. So I love you though. I love you. I love you. That's why I love doing this show with you, man. Uh, I love you, you too. Even though we disagree wholeheartedly on a lot of. Oh things. my god. God forbid if something happens on this planet and it's only you and I the two people left on this earth. <laughs> it's just... Hey, when you sleep, I'm crossing that line in the sand you've drawn. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a, a coconut sh uh, sharpened down into a knife for when you come across <laughs> there. All right, the day says it happened because of 40 years of concerted effort of conservatives to pack the courts. The amount of money and effort that has, <clears throat> excuse me, that has happened behind the scenes. To quietly make it happen. Danae, 100%. We touched on that earlier. Danae always coming in with some wisdom, so we appreciate that. Uh, someone here, Facebook user, says, Facts, Dion. I'm going to assume that's Katie again. Crystal T. Miller. Thank All you, right. Crystal. Every, every time I throw something in there, I, I take a guess. Thank <laughs> you for watching, Crystal. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Facebook user says, We don't pay attention the way we need to. Absolutely. That was Crystal again. Absolutely, Crystal. Thank you. Crystal, you get on, on the wall for that one. I don't want to not put you up, so thank you for saying that. No, you didn't want to put the facts Dion one up. Okay, I see how it is. I did. I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Had she said facts, Sydney, it was... Bah, 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 bah. Well, no, man. We don't... You know, this is not the right conversation for the air horn. I wouldn't have done that. 
you know, but who knows? You showed the, up when I put it up on the wall, though. Let someone say facts sitting and let's see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook use says insurance companies won't pay out. Oh, sorry, guys. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa wants to jump in here. Sorry about that. Facebook use says insurance companies won't pay out to the families if it's a suicide, right? Now we do have exceptions in some states like that women who moved to Oregon to be able to end her life because she had a brain tumor. So Roe versus Wade, just making it illegal across the board is insane. We need to fucking grow, not regress. Absolutely. Katie Horgan. Thank you, Katie. Katie, strong points. You took it you took it a route I wasn't uh, I hadn't thought about. It hadn't heard. Strong point, Katie. Danae says some religious take on abortion. Are you <clears throat> excuse me, our Unitarian Universal Faith affirms that all of our bodies are sacred and that we are each endowed with the twin gifts of agency and conscience. Each of us should have the power to decide what does and doesn't happen to our bodies at every moment of our lives because consent and bodily autonomy are holy. And when disparities in resources or freedoms make it more difficult for certain groups of people to exercise autonomy over their own bodies, our faith compels us to take liberatory action. I'm going to break that down even a little more simple. And Danae, thank you. I'm going to put that up because um, it's a great comment. I'm going to break that down even <clears throat> more so. I remember when I was a kid and I grew up in a church and I grew up Baptist. And, you know, if you grew up Baptist, if you've been to church as a, at a Baptist church, it's hellfire and all these different things. And if you don't, then this is happening to you and so on and so forth. And my brain as a kid has always thought about religion in a certain way. And I thought about it in a very pragmatic way. And I would just ask questions that I can't believe these adults are not asking. And the question I would ask my grandmother is, if God loves us, then why wouldn't he just set us here on earth and we would just know and just do what it is that he wants to be done? Why would there be any situations where you would, in your afterlife, go to hell and burn for all eternity? Just, just, just let me finish. Let me finish. And all these different things. And the answer that was always given to me was because God has given us free will. And this takes me to, well, if God has given us free will, then why are we so, so hell bent on taking that free will away from people? And taking choices away from those people. And so I, I, I love what Danae um, has put here. Again, always bringing a different way of looking at it. different And, 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 um, and being so concise with it. So thank you, Danae. I appreciate that. That is, um, that is a great way of, of explaining it and looking at it. Dion? God doesn't care. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. There's no evidence that God cares. There's zero evidence that God cares. Look at Trump. If he's supposed to be the evangelical Christian's leader, he's got three different baby mamas. He steals from people. He grabs pussy. He's a sexual abuser. He's a fornicator. He pays Stormy Daniels $130,000 to keep her mouth shut about having sex with him while his third wife was pregnant. Where's God's punishment? Where, where he, he keeps just lying his way to the top. Right. So his punishment comes on a place that none of us know about until we're dead. So at that point, it doesn't even fucking matter. Well, that's my so, well, that's that's but that was you're kind of arguing what I was what I was saying. It is man. It is those Christians who've made this deal with him because that is what man will do. What? I, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm, gonna I, cut you off. I'm arguing. Where's the evidence of your God caring? Because there is no evidence of God. That's not ever what we are arguing today. No, that's what I'm arguing when, when, when we have this conversation about religion versus state and how your belief of God says that if you do all these things in a row, then you get a prize at the end. But if you don't say you're sorry before you do all those things in a row, then you don't get the ultimate prize. Where is the evidence for any of this shit? Every, everything you know about God, everything you've heard about God, everything you've learned about God, everything you've felt about God, you got from a human being first. 
some lying piece of shit told you a story that you believed for whatever reason because you trusted them because you didn't know any better because you didn't want to do any research on your own everything you know about the quote unquote higher power has came from the lips of a human and we all know every human that ever lived is flawed there's a reason why they don't tell you about Jesus's teenage years um forgive me folks if anyone can hear that in the background <laughs> hey. yeah, <I> can, but <laughs> you know i can hear uh, if anyone can hear that i do apologize Chell Gregorio, that he ain't supposed to be working on sunday yeah it's a holy day and she came on saturday <laughs> i should have took them home <laughs> <laughs> but honorio uh did not come last week for whatever reason he's here this week so i do apologize if you can hear him uh, blowing leaves and whatnot <laughs> there in my backyard in the summertime he blowing leaves mm-hmm yeah, what, was, what else would he be blowing out there? You tell me. It's your house. It's the leaves. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the summertime because everything dries out and gets brittle and fall and hits the ground. So anyway, that's what he's doing. So I apologize if you hear that. Denae Turner says the Torah, the Mishnah, the Talmud, if I'm saying that correctly, and later rabbinic sources consider the women's physical and emotional health before that of the fetus. Until the baby is born, Judaism considers the fetus to be part of the woman's body. She is never the villain when difficult choices need to be made. Rabbi Mara Nathan. And that is the most disconcerting thing about this, Danae, is that you are going to see young ladies. And I'm saying this young ladies, girls being vo being forced to give birth to children, whether it be um, health issues but I'm going in the direction of because of rape, because of incest. I've even heard people make the argument over years. Yes, rape is incest is wrong, but it's the will of God that created that child. And so that child has the right to be born and to live as well. And then again, teaching all of us, but specifically me, I did not know that, um, that that's the way that those teachings went. So thank you again for that. It's something else I can put and file away. Um, for a conversation maybe I'll have later today or down the road. I didn't know that. And uh, I think that's the wonderful thing, that they take the woman's body into consideration first before the fetus. As well as I think that's the way that it should be looked at as well across the board. Dion? Again, you don't really care about the unborn. Let's stop, stop the bullshit when it comes to this argument. Oh, the unborn, you got to protect the unborn. But then when they get here, it's like, oh, fuck you should have been unborn because now that you're here you can't have health care you can't have food stamps you can't they're not gonna protect you from from guns at school they don't give a shit about kids so this whole idea that oh we care about unborn babies like no you don't yeah yeah uh one of the wife has showed me some post and i can't think of, think of what it said exactly so but it was very clever but it dealt with um caring about the fetus and abortion but not caring about these kids when it comes time to protect them at the school. Uh, can't the the, the sure. 14 states that have um, the strictest abortion laws also have the worst uh, postnatal care. So don't tell me you care about kids when the 14 states that have the most restrictive abortion laws do the very least for the babies that are born. It's, crazy so it, it's just it's just it's a load of bullshit that they're trying to oh i care about you you don't you you never have and you never will it's just a talking point to get somebody who's too lazy to to live life without the fear of a boogeyman in the sky or a demon below the ground it's just it's a bunch of bullshit is what it is separation of church and state doesn't mean anything except they can create a state that only allows a certain religion it doesn't mean church can't speak politically that was Susie. A point there, Susie. Uh, Roxy here says, biblical, uh, I don't know why I couldn't say that word, ideologies are manipulated to the ideas that, the choose to that they choose to focus on. They turn a blind eye to predatory behavior and will engage in horrible ab abhorrent behavior, yet prop up a system that arguably would generate the very prey that they need. And you are right, and this kind of goes back to what's good for me, is what's good for me be damn everybody else and everyone else's rights so you've you've even seen it during the times of slavery uh where you had slaves who thought god would come and 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 he would deliver them from that life that torture 
and that they were living. I mean, that even goes into the mindset of black people today where I'm going to pray about it. Uh, the, the Lord will deliver me when he's supposed to deliver me. I will find the blessings and where I am, even if even if it's in squalor. But a lot of that was taught from the slave master when he was able to read and interpret the Bible for them. And a lot of that has stayed with black people for 400 plus years, all the way to this standpoint. Um, I can't think of who who said it was in a movie, but it was a great line because it pretty much said black people. We got enough religion already because we do. So going to Roxy's point, that is because those ideas were manipulated to. And I'm, and I'm not saying just to black people. I'm sure there's plenty of groups of people out there could probably say the same thing. I'm speaking for what I know. But those ideologies within the Bible were preached to us, read to us, taught to us, and they stay with us even today. And so it's a terrible thing. This is my favorite quote of the Bible. Faith without works is dead. You got to do the work anyway. So what the fuck do you need the faith for? Tanae says religious freedom means you can practice any religion you want and none at all. Religious freedom doesn't mean you can... Use your beliefs to dictate what others can and cannot do. Your religion should guide yourself, not use and abuse those around you. And that would be great. And I and I don't disagree with that at all, Danae. The only thing about that, and we see it, we're all adults. We know those that have the money who believe what they believe more often are the ones who can get their agenda pushed across the line. And that's just the way it is. I was talking with a friend of mine earlier this week. He uses Jewel. And I don't know if anyone saw it, but Jewel is going to be taken off the market. They've come out and said they're pulling it. Jewel's only problem, and I'm not a smoker. I've never used Jewel. I'm doing any of that. But Jewel's only problem, and I said this to him, was they didn't have the right lobbyists. And they didn't put as much money into their product as the marijuana industry does and as much as the cigarette industry does. Because had they, that product would be able to stay on the shelves. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. You're not going to talk me into the fact that Juul is any more dangerous than someone smoking a cigarette. Maybe it has different dangers to smoking a cigarette, but you're not going to talk me into believing that it's more dangerous. You hear? So, so, so you, know you pull Juul, but you won't pull cigarettes. And that's the only thing that means to me. Juul didn't have it either enough money or they didn't allocate the money in the right directions. Juul's problem was its popularity with children. That's what got Juul in this hot mess. His kids found a way to get a hold of Juul's. And they were smoking them as early as the fourth and fifth grade. That's what damned Jewel. It's the brand name Jewel and the fact that little kids were going to the hospital because they were they were vaping. I know I know um, one of my good friends is a middle school teacher, and she was telling me that she was catching jewels left and right. People, they kids were moving them like cocaine, bro. How they got a hold of Jewel, you could, you could order it off the internet. You could get it by the case. You just lie about the date of birth and you could just buy it like that. So You're right. That was, that was what honestly sunk Jewel. It, all the lobbying didn't matter. It was the fact that little bitty kids, <clears throat> fourth and fifth grade, got that brand name because just because Jewel's gone doesn't mean the, the option to vape is going to go away. It's not. There's, but, you, but, the, but my argument, my pushback would be Different time, same thing. When I was coming up and growing up, it was fourth, fifth grade of smoking cigarettes and getting a hold of them when they weren't supposed to have them. You know, that's why you had the hard push in the states. Now, speaking specific, specifically about Michigan, you got to ID. But kids were still able to get them, whether it be from siblings, whether it be from a cousin, whether it be stealing a couple out of your mom's purse, whatever have you. You still had kids doing it and using it. You know, and the mere fact that you have to put on the side of your product that this will harm you is just a loophole to let the government say, yeah, let us take your take that money from the lobbyists for this for the cigarette industry because we've done this much. So I get what you're saying and I don't and I don't argue it. I'm sure there's kids. I see kids all the time at the mall, whatever, doing shit. I'm like, how the hell are you getting that? But different times, same issue. If Jewel had to put, look, man, we just had them overturn Roe versus Wade. You put the right money in the right people's pockets. They will look the other way. Your kids be damned. They see they see kids being shot and killed in schools and they barely got this 
bill, or, 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 or excuse me, are barely going to get it past the, the finish line. So kids be damned. I don't think those people in D.C. care anything about kids, whether it be about jewel, cigarettes, or guns. I'm not saying they care about kids. I'm saying what damned the jewel brand is that kids smoke jewel. And so jewel is the sacrificial lamb, if you will, to where all we're going to get rid of is because once Jewel's gone, guess what? You're still going to have kids smoking. Like you said, they're still going to do it. They're going to find a way to do it. Right. I'm just saying Jewel specifically, their problem was is that everybody liked their shit that wasn't supposed to be smoking their shit. And it, it wouldn't have mattered. They were coming for Jewel. The, the, he, see, we talk about cancel culture. Well, you make Jewel a good point. just got canceled. You make a good point because we're not going for vaping across the board, but we will yeah. go for this one to make it look as if we mm -hmm. are doing something. So you make a good point there. I still argue, had Jill been putting the money in the right spot, they'd been able to save their own asses. But, I, you know. I don't think Jewel was making that money because, like I said, the kids were the ones getting a hold of it. I don't know any adults who smoke Jewel. You, and you may be right there. They maybe did not have the cash um, to, to save their own asses. Mary Ballard says the hard fact is that if we don't allow abortions, those unwanted babies are going to be abused, neglected, and abandoned. Essentially, our money will be raising them. I have a huge problem with that. And Mary, a lot of people have a huge problem with that. A lot of people have argued that. But the powers that be who make these decisions, they always make decisions that they think won't affect them. In this case, they make a decision. Actually, no, I'm going to stick with that. They make a decision that, that won't affect them. Because I'm sure of someone sitting at the Supreme Court or someone lacing those pockets in the background has either had an abortion directly or been the male the male within a couple who had to have an abortion that none of us know about none of us and even with this they could easily secretively get another one if they needed to because they have the funds to do it so i would agree with you parts you there someone here facebook user says please don't kill babies anymore eric d jessup all right Eric, is that it there? Is that is he beneath that at all? Does he say anything else? Um, let me scroll. Yes. He says abortion on demand until the ninth month, born alive legislation question mark. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I just want to see if he stayed around. Okay. Separation of church and state doesn't mean what people think. It just means you can't make a state that only allows a certain religion. Religion can speak politically. You can have prayer before the Supreme Court. You can campaign on religious grounds, etc. Uh, I would argue that yes, you can do that if the majority wants that to be allowed. When it's not, an, when it's not, and we've seen this, when it is not a religion that the majority holds to be precious, then all of a sudden we don't want it. All of a sudden we have all types of different disagreements about it. But I get what you mean there when you make that um, point there. All right. Mary Ballard says that the Christian, I detest that people throw religion at things they want their way. Facebook user says, Eric, nobody is killing babies. Larry Skigan. Okay. I'm going to skip down. I want to get to this. Um, Susan Collins is a fucking <laughs> idiot. I'm going to put that up. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to skip Roxy. Roxy always has something good. She says, Mary Ballard is absolutely heartbreaking to look in the eyes of a child that was unwanted and uncared for and taken away by a system that values profits over anything and re-victimized over and over again. Agreed. Okay, so I'm assuming this is Eric here. Abortion on demand until the ninth month, born alive legislation. I don't even know what that means. I'm sorry for the, the, the pause there. I'm trying. I wish I could see Eric's name so I could just get right to his. Uh, he says, uh, uh, CT simply enunciated the fallacy of legislation from the bench. Roe was not law. No. and C Eric, CT being Clarence Thomas. Right. Um, you can. I would say this to you, Eric. There's a lot of things that are not law. And I like that you put it in, in capitalized. Uh, you, that you capitalize all the letters because you'll get this. A lot of things are not law, but the Supreme Court has no problem with standing on a lot of conservative issues, even though it's not law. 
the, the, the mistake that you're making is that you do not think that this group of people understand that, Eric. And, and I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and I hope that you're able to listen to other people's thoughts uh, as well. Whether it is or isn't law is not the issue. There are a lot of judgments that's come from those nine people this year and years prior that were not law. The one thing that I will agree with is that that is where voters and Congress failed themselves and us was by not making it law, by assuming that it would always be, by not seeing the, 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 the writing on the wall and Mitch McConnell, and I said this before, Mitch McConnell and other Republicans and, and that religious right moving to this. That's where the issue really comes into place. But yeah, please do not quote anything that the pubic hair on a Coke can um, ever says because he's been wrong every day of the week, twice on Sunday, since he sat down in front of Congress uh, for, for, for uh, his own no nomination. So please don't do that. Please don't do that. Because the next thing that I would say, and I just found out about this, do you know that the, what rules that Clarence Thomas got married under when he married his white wife? That shit wasn't above board. So when you talk about going back as he did and, and, and taking away the rights of gay people to be married, are you going to go back and take away the right of mixed couples to be married as well? So these, are, these are all things that got to be taken into account. All of these things. But thank you for jumping in with us. I do appreciate it. Um, I love this here. This goes on the board. I don't know who put this up. That doesn't happen. Stop with the bullshit. So, so <laughs> who, who wrote that, D.I.? Your boy, Larry. Larry. Abortion on demand, which is from, comes from Eric. Abortion on demand until, I want to give all of it here. Abortion on demand until the ninth month, question mark, born alive, legislation, ninth month. And Eric, or Larry jumps in and says, that doesn't happen. Stop with the bullshit. Larry, we're going to see some other comments before we almost to the end of the show. But that one right there, I'm probably going to say is going to be the winner today. <laughs> and then we, get a, then we get a Sydney Smith heart. Oh, I'm sorry. That might be the winner today. That goes up on the wall. And we go ahead and make that bigger. Sydney Smith heart. I don't know who, who did that, but that needs to be that. that I'm not bigger. telling you. This, <laughs> you... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm taking it off. That just was kidding. Taryn. All right, Taryn. All right, let's keep this thing going. We're almost done with the show. I appreciate you guys. I love how you made it bigger. That was ridiculous. Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. That was what? You couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. Taryn made a great comment there. I can see it. I can read the comments. Uh, but people want to see it on the screen. People want to see these things, Dion. You know, I'm for the people. I don't know who you for, uh, Dion. Yeah, yeah. The people of Sydney Smith. I am yeah. the man of the people. You I, are a... the conservative religious person who's putting Amy Coney Barrett on the screen. No, when it comes to, when no, it comes to this show, you no. are the Supreme Court. Sir. No, no, no. <laughs> Do not compare me to Amy Coney Barrett. And don't get upset because you know what you upset? I'm a man because of the people. You didn't blow up Fax Dion, but you showed the input. So they can see that. Part. They can see oh. that. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you sound like, so I'm okay who, with it. Who? As long as you know. I'm a man amongst uh -huh. my folks. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Let's get back to some of these here. Um, Carla says, the biggest thing we need to understand a person's body is their body. Absolutely. Excuse me. Dion, yeah, you still with me right there? Okay. Yeah, that, I'm here. That, that was my headphones. Danae says, liberals... Leo says are outcome oriented while conservatives are more interested in the court's role in society for the right outcome or a decision in a specific case matter less than ensuring the next generation of judges shares a judicial philosophy. Absolutely. And she gives a, she gives a link here as well. For those of you who are obviously watching the show, you can go ahead, guys can go ahead and click on that link um, after the show. Please do it after the show. Yes, Danae. Uh, t tell Leo he is correct. It kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Uh, the, uh, Republicans are concerned with the long game, fourth quarter, playing through the whistle, while liberals are concerned that they scored a touchdown in the first quarter as if the game is over. See, Facebook users, most people don't vote on a state level. They only vote 
in the presidential election. And that is a huge problem. I'll put that up because that's something Susie. we spoke about as well. That is a huge issue, um, which I wish people would understand and get and get over. See, 2A doesn't mention <clears throat> AR-15s. In fact, when it was written, the bullet wasn't even invented, invented yet. Absolutely. And again, that goes back to a lot of <laughs> what, what was thought about, what was written about and what the Supreme Court decides they want to decide. You know, take, for instance, they decided right on the heels of children being killed. Oh, we should expand the rights of people to now carry weapons. Uh, and now you see states going to have to battle with that. New York, I think, is at the top of the list of trying to battle that right now. Facebook user. But at the same time, Sydney, some of the states are also making it illegal for a pregnant woman to leave the state. And some of them are making it illegal and you will serve time. I have seen that as well. And that is an ugly thing and a disgusting thing as well. You're right. Some of these women to leave and get it done are going to have to do it under the, the, the cover of darkness. Uh, and it's, it's a terrible thing there. Let's see. Eric D. The second doesn't give you the right to own any gun. Facebook user, he got it backwards. Democrats definitely know the long game. Republicans stop short because they assume shared values. Democrats get Bert and Ernie in the kids' heads 50 years ago. Today is drag queens. Who, who, who wrote that? Your boy, Eric. What's the problem with the drag queen? Eric, first of all, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Dion, you take this one. Go ahead. Nah, it just pisses me off that, like, all of a sudden, because a man dresses up as a woman with a wig and talks in a certain voice, that they are somehow wrong or evil or bad. It's like, no, you are focused on the outward appearance. But what, from what I know about drag queens is they are some of the most caring people in the world. They care about children. They care about equality. They care about people learning. They care about being different. They care about sharing. And this idea that, oh, because a man dresses like a woman, all of a sudden he's going to prey on little kids. When you watched the Christian or the Catholic Church for years prey on little boys and girls and nothing was done. They just picked them up and moved them to a different parish. I don't want to hear you say a goddamn thing about any drag queen, burden Ernie, Snuffleupagus, Transformers. I don't want to hear it. Because the fact of the matter is, is if y'all really cared about children the way you say you do, you wouldn't teach them to be racist, sexist, and 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 just all these conservative Christian ideas that these people, they grow up to be assholes. Each and every last one of you people are assholes. You don't know how to behave in a society that doesn't look like you. You're, you're an egotistical dick. Point blank period. I grew up watching Sesame Street, and as a child, I never thought about, are these two puppets gay? Is this a gay relationship? I never thought about that. I've never saw a child have this discussion. I never saw anybody who was an adult have this discussion with their child. I don't know anyone, personally, who said their children couldn't watch Sesame Street because Bert and Ernie were... I, hell, I'm a dude, and I've had guy roommates in the military and outside the military. It doesn't, I've never thought that way. I don't know, Eric, why you would. I don't know. And to Dion's point, who gives a shit about drag queens? Who cares? Who cares? I personally would love to have a real conversation with you, Eric. I wish you were on the screen and would jump on right now because I have a couple of questions that I would love to ask you. I would love to ask you, uh, but I, I, I don't know how you got to that and then got to that. And I don't know why either one of those things even matter, to be honest with you. But again, I do appreciate you watching and sharing your thoughts, though. I do. It may not sound like I do, but I do. That's why the show's called Now That's Debatable. I agree with Sydney, what he just said. I wholeheartedly disagree with everything you just said, but I do appreciate you being willing to stand up here and have this conversation. I will, I will decry your thought process as ignorant, but I will defend your right to say whatever ignorant thing it is that you want to say, because that's what we're supposed to do. Like, you don't have to agree with my way of life, but your job is to not make it harder. 
I'm not trying to make it harder for you to espouse your beliefs. I disagree with them. And when it comes to law, I'm going to fight tooth and nail so that you don't have your way, so that you can't marginalize people because you don't agree with the way they look or the way they behave. Drag queens don't hurt you. They've never hurt you. And if they have hurt, hurt you, you should have went to the local authorities and, and but it, got, but, got, got, but, but that doesn't hurt, happen. But you weren't hurt because they were a drag queen. So, yeah, that, all right, let's go here. Um, Facebook user here says, bottom, bottom line, as a woman living in Texas, I have less rights than my husband and even my 18 year old male employees. And I say, fuck that. And I say, fuck that along with you. Uh, I'm assuming this is Larry Skiggins again saying I, it, I lost all the comments, bro. OK, I'm, then I'm going to go best I can. Eric D. Drag queens. So you are a homophobe also. Well, let's not throw names out there. Let's not let's not do that. Let's not do that. All right. Let's keep it going here. All right. If you guys are hearing that, I do apologize for some reason. The phone call is trying to come through. Not sure if you heard that. Facebook user says, is there another I can't even I can't even pronounce that word. I, I'm going to do my best with this one. Is there another nomenclature I could use to describe what I see as a misuse of my property taxes? <laughs> Nomenclature? Is that the word? I, I you 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 guessed as well as I did on that one. That's a good one. Who who's I don't even know who said that. Yeah, one. that's nomenclature. I don't know who said it though because like I said, I, for some nice reason word. I, I lost all the comments. Nice word. Is that was that my wife? Uh, Mary, I, I, uh, Mary I, Ballard says, LOL, Tamara, that's hilarious. The fines would take care of these neglected babies. All right. I think that's because that they're about to outlaw jerking off. <laughs> Facebook user says, woman couldn't even get a bank account without a man's signature until the 1960s. If those old guys want to argue God wants that baby born, they should outlaw Vi Viagra. Maybe their limp dick is God's will. That's a good I mean, how does it work for one side, but not the other? Let's make I mean, it make sense. Absolutely. You know, if you absolutely. can't keep your, your your penis hard without pumping yourself full of drugs, then why should a woman have to carry a baby that she doesn't want to have to carry for whatever reason that she deems necessary? Someone recommended StreamYard to me. I'm going to look into it again. I have looked into that. Um, thank you for the suggestion. Obama damn turned the whole state blue in 08. Yeah. What state? I'm assuming they are talking about uh, Arizona. I wish I could see these comments. I don't know what the hell happened, but. The Nate Turner says, if you put chocolate on shit, it's still covered in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just scrolling through the last of these folks. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for sticking with us. We appreciate it. It's been a great discussion. Let's see, just we're almost done with the show. Hang in there. Facebook user says religious people care about the fetus until it's an actual baby, and then they are the first ones to cut help for the struggling mother. And absolutely. Homicide detective. Quote When I see a beautiful sunset, I believe in God. When I go to a brutal murder scene, I know he gave up giving a shit about us a long time ago. I'm gonna put that up. Because uh, I think that's someone who is speaking to Dion on that one. Speaking to Dion's language. Homicide detective. When I see a beautiful sunset, I believe in God. When I go to a brutal murder scene, I know he gave up giving a shit about us a long time ago. All right. All right. Okay. They they agree, but I would you know I would go much further than that. But because the sun kills you, if you stand out in the sun too long, you're gonna fucking die. So don't tell me God cares. Because he doesn't, because that's what radiation is. God doesn't care. He has no reason to. He right. doesn't need your soul for anything. If he had the power to create the universe, what does he need your soul for? Absolutely nothing. So, so it's a good point here that uh, Facebook user is using. Lobbying is bribery, pure and simple. Romney got 13 billion from the NRA. He's not going to vote for anything contrary to the NARA. And absolutely, it's the way our political system works for the most part. Abortion probably saved a few and choice politicians' careers. Yep. And Roxy Perez says, to compare that being pro-choice is the same as being pro, 
uh, and unnecessary abortion at nine months is a fallacy and is absolutely ridiculous and not based on fact. It's called case law and these cases establish precedent, which is another big issue that a lot of us have with what those nine folks did. I shouldn't say nine, but those six people did. Mary Ballard, someone put this up. She says, you two crack me up. So see, right there, I'm going to make it big because you act like you've never seen any comments that people say about you. So there you go, Dion. Are you happy now? I see everything everybody says about me. I'm saying you never post what people say about specifically just me. No, Carla, that's not your Taryn, suckerfish. All right, got to go, guys. Love y'all. Love you, too. Carla that says, was Katie Horgan. Katie. I did see that comment. Carla says, love drag queens. All right. <laughs> Mary Ballard says, yes, Dion. My mom raised me to not see creed, color, financial class, or anything else. I was taught to treat everyone equally. Mary says, drag queens are more underpaid than comedians and work their asses off. How dare you, Mary? How dare you? All right. So. <laughs> uh, and to that, I would say, Mary, it's okay to see class, creed, and color. It, it's fine to see what is in front of you. It's to go beyond that and treat people as you would want to be treated. It's okay to recognize the differences. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to do. The fact that we're all the same when we know we're not all the same. That's the difference is the beautiful part about it. It's Absolutely. what you do after that difference that really shows what type of person you are. All right, let's go to our what the hell segment really quick really smooth really easy Dion. what you got this week for what the hell my what the hell is what what the hell are y'all still donating money to trump for why are y'all still giving this fucking thief y'all money what will, in the hell is wrong with y'all you will give an applause for that. <laughs> stop giving this man money it's been two years since he lost and he showed you a lick shit of evidence to prove any other bullshit he said, and y'all still going to rallies, y'all still buying t-shirts. Why? For Look, I get that he's your president. I can understand that. What I'm saying is, is why are you spending money on your president? My president never cost me a motherfucking dime. I never gave a nigga no money. I ain't gonna give a nigga no money. Stop spending your money on politics. That shit should be free. What the hell? Um, my what the hell is this? What the hell is going on? What the hell are we still sitting here two years later uh, watching these people sit up here and talk about Trump? We all know we tried to cheat. We all know that everybody was involved in cheating. We all know that once the, the, when the spotlight, when, the, when, the, when you flip the, the light on in the kitchen, all the cockroaches start running. All right. That is all we are seeing. What the hell are we doing? And. What the hell? Why do I want to vote for Mike Pence now? What the hell? Why do why the dude who looks like the guy from Star Wars? You guys all remember the, the Star Wars when when the uh, when the guy made uh, 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 Darth Vader cut Luke Skywalker's hand off. Mike Pence has always always reminded me of that guy. Always. Now I want to vote for this guy after these hearings. What the hell is going on? What did you do to me over here? I was completely against him. I was ready to vote for pants, suit, and converse Kamala Harris if I had to. Now I don't know. I'm all in flux now. What the hell? You better not vote for Mike Pence. That might be, <laughs> that might be the end of our friendship right then and there. Because I'm from Indiana where that motherfucker was governor. And let me tell you, he ain't going to do nothing you like. Trust me. Might be, just... the end of, might be the end of our friendship, but won't be the end of our brotherhood. That has been the end of Now That's Debatable this week. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Thank you guys for sharing in the conversation. It's much better when two men do not have to try to discuss what should happen with women's bodies. Thank all of our female master debaters and our male master debaters for coming on and having this discussion with us. We love each and every one of you guys. Uh, I see some thank yous out there. Thank you, Sydney and Dion, and all of you who joined in the discussion. Uh, some great sh folks out there saying great show. And then Roxy says, bye, guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you next week. Hopefully you should, all three of us, all three of us, Roxy. Everyone have yourself a great week, whether you're working or you got some time off because it's the summertime. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your time. We'll see you in a week. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Sorry my light went out. I don't know what happened. Yeah, shut it all off. Pay them bills. <laughs> <laughs>